It's rivalry week. Miami Hurricanes hosting Florida State. Is this going to be a routine dub for the Canes, or will the Seminoles have something to say? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Got a crossover here, Miami and Florida State. Shout out to the everydayers for making this Locked On crossover your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. On this episode, you're watching and listening to us both on Locked On Seminoles and on Locked On Canes. We will give our predictions for this Saturday, 7 p.m. at Hard Rock Stadium. Key matchups to watch. We'll talk about the rivalry factor. We'll talk about uh, the midseason grades uh, for these teams and where they stand so far. He is Brian Smith, who's not only the recruiting overlord here on the Locked On Network, but host of Locked On Seminoles. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. And uh, Brian, first and foremost, I think everyone knows who's going to be starting at quarterback for Miami, but is there any question or any quarterback controversy between Brock Glenn and Luke Cromanhawk for this week? I say yes, but we both know that no matter the school, the coaches are going to avoid that like leprosy. Okay. They're, they're not going to talk about it, but I mean, yeah. Brock had three consecutive plays with the turnover last week. That's hard to do, Alex. That is really hard to do. So, Luke came in, he got the short end of the stick, kind of like Brock did on some drops, but you know, he's not anywhere ready. He's not processing fast enough yet. And he shouldn't be, he's six, seven games into his freshman season in Tallahassee. So they're in a bad spot either way. I would expect both to play and Brock to start, but I'm sure we're going to get a lot of word salad out of Mike Norvell at his press conference. Yeah, no, no doubt. And and th those coaches are alike in that regard because you don't oh, always get a whole lot Crystal of clarity Ball's either. Worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's he's one of the worst in the country. There's no yeah. doubt. <laughs> Especially when it comes to, to injury info. But Miami did, you know, a couple games ago see the return of Ruben Bain. And then last game uh, against Louisville did see the return of Jalen Rivers. So those things eventually did happen. You know, obviously in, in Miami's case, uh, arguably the most stable quarterback situation in the entire country. You know, Cam Ward has himself in the Heisman conversation. He's actually, Brian, all seven games as a Miami Hurricane has thrown for at least 300 yards in each game so far this past, uh, this season. And, and I know I was looking at the pro football focus grades. You know, you take those with a grain of salt, of course. But they actually gave Ward like his third lowest grade of the season against Louisville. I actually thought, Brian, that that was probably Ward's best game because you got the good with none of the bad. He committed zero turnovers against Louisville while throwing for 319 yards and four touchdowns. So I was actually surprised they didn't grade him more highly than they did. You got me. Um, I'm always a little iffy with the grading. It's hard because there's so much subjectivity to it. But I watched the majority of that game. He, As you said, he didn't take many chances. He had the one throw, like he threw back to the middle or whatever and got away with it or something. Yeah. yeah. But his arm strength and his ability to throw from angles – opens the door and closes it at the same time, depending on when it is, you know, some of those guys over at the cover three pod call it whoopsie daisy passes every now and then he had like the underhand one or whatever, you know, he, he does some of that crazy stuff, but he's so adept at making the play in the moment. You got to live with it because how many touchdowns has Cam created because he does right. things outside the box. That's not coachable. So even if his grade was third lowest and you come up with 50 some points, I guess Thumbs up is kind of how I would look at it. I, I wouldn't worry much about that. Yeah, and you know, Ward, Ward is uh, the big reason why, because uh, we'll, we'll talk here about what's been working so far this year for Miami, what has been working for Florida State. And the big thing for Miami that's been working is the offense. Uh, you know, number one in total offense, uh, number one passing offense in the country. And it seems like the running game is now coming along. They were lagging behind a little bit first five games of the year uh, this past week a weekend against Louisville 219 team rushing yards Mark Fletcher started and he did fumble uh, outside of that had a nice day and Damian Martinez actually as the second running back had his best game of the season for Miami had a, a hard nose 30 yard touchdown to seal the game had a couple of angry runs in that one so 
you know, I, I can only grade Miami's offense uh, an A-plus, Brian, and obviously the defensive side has been a far different story. But before we get to what hasn't been working for Miami, uh, I, I know it, you may be grasping at some straws here after a 1-6 and six start, but is there anything you would say has been working for Florida State, anything that the Seminoles can build on? Well, there's a couple of things that are ironic, like their running game going into this prior contest against Duke was literally dead last in the nation, 134. But they ran for 160 yards. Sack adjusted average is like 5.6 or something like that. Duke's defense against the run's not great, but they bludgeoned them pretty good with the freshman quarterback. So maybe they figured out something. They, they put a couple of different guys in the lineup at different spots at guard. They still had some ugly moments. Um, that would be the interesting part because Miami's D-line, as you know, is not lacking for physical skill or experience. So I'm curious to see if they can get that going. And their screen game to the running backs can be explosive. The second play of the game against Duke, Tofili took one down inside the red zone. He's very elusive and he's got great hands. Those are the things they're good at, but they're basic. Anything where they get behind the sticks, they struggle, and that's reality. And that's why their offense is, quite honestly, one of the worst in college football. But I do, I do have to wonder if uh, you know Florida State's offense that they're they're the highlight uh, in points this year was actually the opening game of the season when they scored 21 points in Dublin. They have not equaled that total since. But could this be the slump buster for Florida State's offense going up against Miami's defense, uh, who you know started the season you know, against lesser opposition? I'll, I guess I'll include Florida in that. Florida's been better lately, but my, Miami first four games of the year, the, the defense looked. Overall, fine, but against Virginia Tech and against Cal uh, and, and against Louisville. Now, Louisville's got a good offense, but Miami's defense, um, coverage bus galore, giving up big plays, chunk plays, a lot of confusion, questionable tackling. Uh, the defensive backfield at times, Brian, just really looks lost. I know this past Saturday was probably an especially rough game for Jaden Harris and, and Diani Hill. I mean, even when uh, when coverages aren't being missed, some critical pass interference and defensive holding penalties have, have been taken taking place in extending drives. And so, yeah, it's it's been problematic uh, the past few weeks. And, and really, it's just been a tale of two sides of the football. I mean, a, a top offense in America and, and a defense that has forced the offense to play in a lot of shootouts. That, that's what's been an issue for Miami as of late. Now, you did you mentioned Miami's defensive line. That's honestly been the saving grace, Brian, that the D-line has been good. Uh, Simeon Barrow, uh, the transfer defensive tackle from Michigan State, oh. I think has been the best, best defensive player on the team so far this year. He's nasty. Uh, He's nasty. Ruben Bain has been back for two games and has played – very well since his return from injury. So uh, the, the defensive line, you know, bails out the rest of the defense from time to time. But the D, the D has not been uh, ever present for Miami. Now for Florida State, uh, how much time do you have? But I mean, what 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 is not what has especially been problematic for the Seminoles so far? Third down defense. This is one of the weirdest combinations. They got some of the best pass rushers in the country. Their pass rate or pass rush efficiency is high. They've been in the top twenty like tackles for loss and sacks and stuff like that. But the problem now has become other teams are like, well, you guys can rush the passer, so we know you're not going to score much, and they're, they're right. They just run the ball, zero turnovers. Like Florida State is, I think, 129th in the nation in turnovers. Create, they've created three because teams are just super conservative because they don't have to score. I mean, it sounds just dumb, but because of that, Florida State creates sacks when you do pass – but you're always in manageable third downs and the defense gets wore down and then their third down percentage gets annihilated, even though they're good at getting negative plays. That usually doesn't work that way. So if you get Florida State in third and threes and third and fours, you got a pretty good chance. And that's where this comes in. I know you're a Miami fan, so this is this is ridiculous. Like Restrepo and Horton and all those guys are good. But on third down, Third medium is the money maker in the NFL. Third and fours, third and six, stuff like it's same in college. Here's here's what Ward has done on third downs. This is where Florida State usually eats, but not against Ward. He is just killing it. He's 14 to 17, 82.4%, 215 yards, three touchdowns, and no picks. 12 first downs. That's like awesome. stats in a little league rec league kind of thing. Yeah. Like he's even at third and long, he's around 50% or so that he converts. He's as good a third-down quarterback as college football has seen in the modern era. So 
Florida State sucks at it, and he's the best I remember. That's not going to bode well for the Knowles. Yeah, Miami's the number one third down team in the country, and and right. like you mentioned, it's not not only third and medium. Uh, you know, uh, at, at this point, even oh, if it's third, third and fifteen. The, the, oh, yeah, yeah. He, it's insane. They, they, they had a against Louisville. They had a third and seventeen that Ward picked up with his legs, and that that stuff has been kind of ordinary for Miami this year. But I, I want to talk about some critical matchups when we come back. And honestly, I don't want any locked on Canes or locked on Seminoles viewers to think that I'm I'm getting cocky about this one because I do believe in the rivalry X factors. Because over oh, I, I I've watched probably you know close to four. I'm I'm 40 years old. I've watched close to 40 Miami versus Florida State games over the years, and you expect the unexpected a lot of times in this rivalry. So friends, you want to keep it locked right here. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your next rough day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and then you'll feel at your best tomorrow. Step one, drink pre-alcohol. For best results, make pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Step two, drink responsibly. Pace yourself, hydrate, get a good night's sleep. And step three, enjoy tomorrow. Wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. Guys, this works. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on college at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college at checkout for 15% off. Thank you so much for making this epic locked on crossover your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Got Brian Smith from Locked On Seminoles, Alex Dono from Locked On Canes talking about this matchup this weekend. Uh so, you know, Brian, something that that I look at, uh you know, statistical tr- uh, trends, Florida State's defense of course much better than that offense. Uh 38th in the country against the pass. I saw Fentrell Cypress had a really good game against Duke and Florida State limited Duke's total offense limited their passing game so uh, I'm definitely looking at that matchup when Miami throws and Miami loves to throw Cam Ward loves to find his weapons he's been over 300 yards every game so I wonder if Florida State can maybe create some turnovers some takeaways in the passing game if they can frustrate Miami's passing offense a little bit Uh, so that that's probably the biggest matchup that I look at from a Miami side what are you looking at matchup wise in this game Well, I will piggyback off that and just be a little more specific. There's two that I'm curious. Xavier Restrepo this year is not good. He's elite. 39 catches, 686, 17.6, and six touchdowns. He's a first-team All-American in my book right now. But at the same time, you still have multiple other guys. And by the way, hats off to Isaiah Horton, who's really stepped up. You got the other two guys behind him. We got 24 catches, but Isaiah's got 34, 412. 12.1 12.1 and four scores. So they spread it around. Who's going to guard X, especially when you're subbing? Not many nickel corners at the pro level are going to want to handle X. I'm concerned about that for Florida State, even though they got talent. And then Florida State is going to go up against a team that uses H backs and tight ends very well. Lofton is a guy that not many people know about unless you follow Miami. He's a freshman that's a good football player. He might be a guy, especially like red zone, third downs or something to get a big play. And of course, Elijah is, you know, good for him that he's healthy. He's having a nice year. I'm not real confident with the Knowles in coverage at linebacker, but they like to play man. So you're going to live and die with it. Kind of like Miami had like, you know, um, yeah. I'm sure we'll get to it in a second, but like Miami has Daryl Porter. We never hear about Daryl Porter because why would you throw it? And the other spot's not very good. Florida State's two corners aren't good, so you throw it in the middle of the field a little more, force the safeties to make plays. They got two guys that will at least go to the NFL draft. I think uh, Azariah will play in the NFL for a while. He's a 6'2 corner. He's really good. Miami's going to avoid him for the most part. Make the nickel, make the linebackers cover, look for more screens for Miami. Florida State gets confused on things once in a while, and they're mixing in younger guys at linebacker, which is good long-term, but against Miami's complex offense, uh, 
that doesn't give me warm and fuzzies. All right, so here, here's a, a matchup I, I want to pick your brain on because, again, like obviously Florida State's offense has been pretty tragic uh, to start the year. Uh, oh, my, Miami's yeah. defense has had their struggles, but uh, your take on what you think Miami's pass rush can accomplish in this game because no matter which or combination of quarterbacks Miami goes up against Brock or Luke, lack of experience there. You know, Brock, the Second year redshirt freshman, you know, Luke being the even less experienced guy. Uh, I mentioned um, Simeon Barrow has been playing great rushing the passer from the interior. Ruben Bain has been back playing well. Tyler sure. Barron had a great start to the year. How's uh, Florida State's offensive line been, Brian, in recent weeks? And do you think they can provide some protection? No. <laughs> they are atrocious in pass protection. Um, let me give you two examples. They got into the red zone on the very first drive against Duke after the big play. And the following, I'm, I'm saying in full honesty, I have watched football since the early 1980s. This is the worst offensive line play I've ever seen. They had three guys go block one. Three. What are we doing? Both guards in the center went out to block the same guy. Both defensive tackles went into the backfield. Neither one was blocked. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And both the guards were moved to that spot one or two weeks ago, and the other one moved from tackle and Jay went early. Andre Otto, who's not ready, is at the other spot. They're going to get eaten alive, is my straight-up opinion. The yeah. center, Maurice Smith, is a good player. yeah, But he's just dealt a difficult hand because the guard play's been so bad. They'll rotate T.J. Ferguson in a little bit. The only thing you need to watch, I don't care which team you root for, what you're in, just watch the A-gaps. If they're not doing well, when, and I don't expect them to, I expect a lot of second and 10, second and 11s, or worse, because Florida State's not going to be able to block them up front. They get confused a lot, and they have problems. Duke's pretty well coached, but they were running really generic stunts, and not one of them getting home both. Yeah. What do you think Miami's going to do with that talent difference between the level of Duke and Miami? Miami could have six to eight sacks, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those things that I don't necessarily see it playing out this way. And I'll, I'll talk about why, you know, I, I think Florida State can maybe keep this game closer than a lot of people think. But if Miami does have an opportunity to run up the score, oh, I think will. this might be the week where they'd be willing to do it. Because Cristobal remembers when Florida State came into Hard Rock Stadium two years ago and beat Miami 45 to three and showed absolutely no mercy. <laughs> In that game, so if given, if given the opportunity to flip that, uh, Cristobal sure. will take. I would. that opportunity, but but it's like but something else. Like when I've watched Florida State this year, Brian, and obviously there's a lot of issues when you're one and six. Like that one and six is not a coincidence. At the same time, though, there's times when I feel like they're getting a little bit of momentum, and then I see catastrophic mistakes. I see a a bad snap over a quarterback's head that derails a promising drive. You know, I see. Uh, an untimely interception or a fumble, like just like knuckleheaded plays that make it look worse than it probably really is. So is there any feeling in Tallahassee that some of that's fixable and that they may be able to maybe put together their best game this weekend? I mean, a lot of that stuff is just mental. Like two games ago, Maurice, yeah. I mean, he's a 60 year senior. He played at Miami Central, if I remember right. How do you explain that? You know what I mean? It's just bizarre. And then, like I said a minute ago, they literally had three guys blocking a linebacker while both defensive tackles went into the backfield. Oof. I mean, I know Florida State's coaching is not exactly at the top of the board. I'm being very kind. I expect several guys to get canned after this year. But this is partially just players self-imploding. So the only fix is reps. Um and they're going to get trial by fire this next Saturday. Yeah. Hard Rock will be loud, uh, which it's usually not, but it will be loud because this will be the game where Miami fans show up. They've been waiting for this for a long time, and, you know, I, I get it. They're going to want to see Miami up 21 and nothing after the first quarter, and they might. So I think the only thing that Florida State can fix is to really just continue to improve the run game because they're not going to be able to pass protect against Miami. Pass protection takes months to get going in any chemistry. Run game's a little bit easier. They, they do have very talented running backs. Florida State is not shy on running back talent. So I think that's their that's their key. 
And then they need to try to get those tight ends, those young tight ends involved, some quick outs and different things just to get athletes to ball. But I don't think there's much chance of improvement against Miami overall. You mentioned, uh, and I agree with you, there's probably going to be a lot, a lot of turnover on the assistant coaching staff. Um, is there is there any scenario where Norvell's seat could get hot, or has he built up too much equity, and is is the buyout quite frankly too high? Is it is it just a matter of they're going to give him an opportunity to make changes and fix it? I think your last point is the key. I don't know the number exact, but I believe it's over sixty million. It's just not happening. Yeah, no. This it's just not realistic. The problem I have with that is they may need not to wait after twenty. They might want to wait after twenty. It's just a financial deal. Yeah, and it's recruiting. I mean, you're going to put yourself in such a bad spot. Like this is a lose lose. Um, Mike seems like a pretty nice guy, pretty loyal guy. Very. I've met him before. Yeah, and, 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 and that's good. But I've always said this: show me a head coach that's very loyal to his assistants, and I'll show you a head coach that's soon to be fired. There's always somebody that needs to go because it's very, very complex. He's got to can several guys or else he will be on the hot seat the next year because fans, like on my pod, go in the comments section on YouTube, it is nonstop, fire everybody. And it only takes one or two of the people that write seven-figure checks to feel that way, and then you got problem. So Florida State is not rolling in money right now, so they're, they're in a really awkward spot. Yeah, no, no doubt. Well, we'll give our – our predictions when we come back. Hurricanes, by the way, I, I was checking this on FanDuel. We'll talk uh, more about that. But Miami favored by 19 and a half points. That was the opening too number. Uh, 19 and a half. Too low. You want to keep it locked right here. We're not done yet on this brand new episode. Locked on crossover. We got Brian Smith from Locked on Seminoles. I am Alex Dono from Locked on Canes. Keep it locked right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. I know you're keeping it locked to game time. This is the only ticket app that we use. You're getting the best prices, and those prices tend to go down the closer you get to the start of the event. Like, I'm looking at Miami-Florida State tickets. For those, whether you're a Miami fan or a Florida State fan, you want to go to Hard Rock Stadium, I'm looking at $98 tickets right now. And a few days ago, they were starting at 108 so down to $98. You want to take advantage of these great deals and great features at game time. Game time has a new feature called game time picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play even easier. Game time picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Guys, I love the all in pricing feature. They show you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout You can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Game time has the lowest price guarantee, or they'll credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College, and we'll give you twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Thank you so much for making this Locked On crossover your first listen and your first watch today. For your next listen, make sure you check out Locked On College Football. Spencer McLaughlin does an awesome job taking you through all the big games and big storylines. And college football has been crazy so far this year. So Spencer does a great job navigating all that chaos. Uh, Brian Smith, before we give our, our game predictions for Florida State at Miami this Saturday, 7 p.m., uh, can, can you give me a, a possible recruiting nugget here? Because I know there's going to be a lot of recruits at the game, you know, hosted by Miami, watching Miami and Florida State. One of those recruits who's going to be in the building is five-star defensive back DJ Pickett, who's he's been committed since the summer to LSU. Uh, you know, Miami, if he's a legacy, Miami would love to flip him from LSU. Do you think there's any opening there? Or is DJ, I know he's got a great relationship with Corey Raymond at LSU. Does he seem pretty locked in, or could there be an opening? I always say follow the visits. I was curious if he was going to go to this game. If DJ follows through and actually does it, I mean, just for the sake of the record, I yeah. think Miami's right there. I, I know he's committed to LSU, but I've known DJ since he's in eighth grade. Good guy, always happy to do interviews and stuff when you get a chance to be in front of him and all that. But if you're still taking visits and you're in the middle of your senior year, you're not committed. That's how I look at it. If I'm a Miami fan, I look at it like this is a legitimate chance. And let's be honest, what's the one spot where Miami needs help more than any other? Oh, 
<laughs> defensive back. I mean, DJ would probably be used in multiple ways. For those of you who don't know anything about him, it doesn't matter. This is all you need to know. He's the rarest defensive back I have ever scouted. He's six four and he can play corner. Yeah. It's just astronomically insane how physically gifted he is. And he's motivated too. Real quiet guy. Kind of reminds me of Jeremiah Smith in that regard. He's just real quiet, but goes about his business by taking the ball away from you. If he goes to receiver, he scores. He's a free safety. He does whatever he wants. It's physical, athletic, and smart. He will be a first-day draft pick one day. All right, so um, I, I'm, I'm going to go on record with my prediction. And we don't we don't usually do these this early in the week. So I'm going to try to stick with this for the next five days. But I uh, again, I... I not only feel like Florida State is going to play, relatively speaking, their best game of the season, because I think they'll be up for the rivalry, but I also don't think they can stop Miami's offense. Nobody can, quite frankly. At least certainly nobody in the ACC can. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go – Miami's going to score a lot. Uh, I'm going to go Miami 45, but I, I don't know. I, I, I'm worried about Miami's D. I hope they prove me wrong, but I think Miami's going to give up 25, score 45. They'll, they'll, cover, they'll cover that spread by a half a point. I'm going Miami 45, Florida State 25, Miami by 20. What do you think, Brian? 45-10. Hmm. I think it'll be just lopsided. Uh, you got to remember, Florida State's throwing out a freshman quarterback and a redshirt freshman quarterback, one or the other, yeah. maybe both. Yeah. I think that in the first half, Florida State are lucky to have 100 yards of offense. I just don't think they'll be able to block them. It, uh, if you watched any of the Texas game – in Texas has got some really good offensive linemen, but Georgia was on fire. I don't care who you got a quarterback. If you got, what would they have, like seven sacks? Against Texas, yeah. so on. That's unbelievable, by the way. Hats off to Georgia. But I expect something similar. I just don't think they'll be able to block them in any third down. Like Florida State might finish the game one out of 12 on third downs, something like that. Wow. I think they will be abysmal, and they will lose field position all night long, and it'll be ugly. Wow. All right. Well, I, I I like your prediction actually better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm is, sure you do. Sure <laughs> he, you is, do. he is Brian Smith, uh, Locked On Seminoles. He's also uh, one of our great recruiting experts here, our, our top recruiting guy here on the Locked On Network. Make sure you follow him on X at FB Scout underscore Florida. Make sure you follow us at Locked On Canes at Alex Dono. And, and thank you guys so much. Uh, Locked on Seminoles listeners and Locked on Canes mm -hmm. listeners for making this crossover your first listen and your first watch today. Brian, uh, best of luck to you, sir, and have a great week of shows leading up to this rivalry uh, clash. Right, thank you very much, sir. You do the same. We'll talk to everyone next time on an er another episode right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.